Hey guys, it's Jasmine here and today we're playing the Wolf's Bite. You guys may remember this from our main channel. We played a little bit of this. It's a, it's a cute little like Yogg story mode game where you have two different factions. You got the piggies and the wolf. And the wolf wants to be a big uh, shot restaurant tour while the piggies are just kind of, you know, they want to sabotage it. It's a really cute game. It's a little back and forth. Um, if you're not familiar with it, go definitely check it out on the main channel or at Stump Gamers. Uh, but anyways, I want to jump into this. I, I really like this game. It's it's absolutely super cute and adorable. Let's just play it. So it's only been one player. So it's between me and the computer. And you know, what? I want to be the wolf again. I like being the wolf. He's so cute. He has two cups of snark. After failing to thrive the highly competitive residential demolition industry, mostly due to difficulties dealing with the brick construction, the big bad wolf decided it was time for a career change. Unable to resist the lure of entrepreneurship, he decided to enter the restaurant business. The three little pigs, dissatisfied with their free sample demolitions, are conspiring, conspiring against the big bad wolf and his new restaurant, The Wolf Bite. The whole village turned out for the grand opening with the Big Bad Wolf finally launch a successful enterprise or the three little pigs throw up a metaphorical brick wall and stop him. Uh, okay, so this game is super, super adorable. What we are going to do is we're going to play the wolf and we want to try to make our business thrive as much as possible while the pigs are going to try to stop us at, at any point. So just like the Yogg, we have places to go and things to do. Last time um, we played this game, we, me and Rick decided to try to be as like amazing as possible and I still want to do as as well as as well as I can so I think I might go to the culinary institute and maybe I might train with the um, cuisines Pierre Cipriani let's do that all right you spend the day training under the watchful eye of Pierre Cipriani with his expert tutelage and rigorous instruction instruction your cooking knowledge and culinary technique grow the wolf bite gains one quality. Sweet. The muffin man is conducting a surprise baking seminar at the Culinary Institute and has personally requested your attendance. What are you going to do? We can make up our own recipe, follow the recipe, follow the recipe with a slight twist. Hmm. Well, if we make our own recipe, it shows that we have the creativity to make something new. If we follow it, it shows that, you know, we're, we're okay with doing the same thing over and over again. Or we can make a slight twist. I'm going to do a slight twist. The Muffin Man is moved to tears by the quality of your souffle. Wolfie, you're not only going to save a fortune by baking your own breads and desserts, but I would personally like to enter into a joint venture with you. Oh, dude. We gained two quality and three wealth for doing that? Our little twist on the muffin. Wait, do you serve the Muffin Man a muffin? Or is he a baker that primarily makes muffins? I don't know. But the piggies are going to town hall. Wait. Where are you going, piggies? Are you gonna work at my restaurant? God dang it. You spend the day working in the restaurant trying to bring down the, from within. The new hiring manager was thrilled she was able to fill three open spots so quickly. From messing up orders or dropping food or trays of food on patrons, you insert each customer's first visit to Wolf's Bite was also their last. The poor hiring manager had no idea what she was getting into. God dang it, we lost the quality for doing that. Being obnoxious and getting a few patrons to leave is okay, but what we really need is a good old fashioned brawl. That will get all the patrons either engaged in fisticuffs or fleeing for the exit. All we need is the right person to get the party started. Oh, dude. You're gonna throw a stick at a, a unicorn? Lion! You are savage, I thought we agreed to stop fighting. What? Savage? I am the king of beasts, you will show more respect or I'll ask you to step outside. Who proclaimed you king, says the unicorn. Your title is fake. I reject your authority and challenge you for your crown. Challenge accepted. I'll see you in the town square. They started a fight. Unfortunately, it took place all around the town instead of inside the tavern. Mm. Oh well, it was still fun to watch. No effect. Womp womp. Dude, you're ruining my first day of work. All right, so here we are. This is what we have. Um, this is where we kind of get into the neat, uh, meat and gritty of this game. Is we have to do this for seven days, seven whole days, because within one week, Gus Fiore is coming to town to uh, judge our little restaurant. And I really want it to be the best restaurant ever. So Gus Fiore has got win with the intrigue surrounding the wolf's bite and would like to feature on his show, Restaurants, Taverns, and Bars. Will this episode be about redemption or revenge? All right. So now it's the day two. Let's see what we can do now. So we got ourselves a, uh, a little cooking inspiration. 
We could. I, I want to see this from the choices. Like, what's, what could we do at the bar? We could tend the bar or man the DJ. Hmm. We could go ingredients or promote our restaurant. That's pretty good. Go fishing, relax by the lake. Acquire magical ingredients, have our fortune told. Dealer food. Lobby cater. What could we do in the bad side of town? Mention the youth, they're cooking classes for adults. <laughs> uh, let's promote our restaurant in the grocery shop. Let's do that. I've, I haven't done this before. Every meal cooked at home is a meal not brought at your restaurant. Your business depends on full wallets and empty stomachs. Pamphlets, business cards, and your ability to work with the room turn several would-be grocery store patrons towards the wolf's bite. The wolf gains one reputation. Sweet. Unfortunately, your usual specialty merchant is out of some essentials, and you have to add them to your routine store trip. As you turn down aisle eight, you spot Jean Garcia, private chef to the mayor. You lock eyes as the realization strikes you both that there were only one jar of snap pepper left on the shelves. You are both planning on preparing the snap dumpling this evening. Curses. Jean is a half step farther and has the jar. What do you do? Um, I don't want to disperse the mayor. I also don't want to pay triple for that. I'll offer him a recipe. Maybe my recipe to him will like encourage the rest or the mayor to come over here. Jean, 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 my dearest Jean. As you can see, there's but one jar of snap pepper left and we both need it. What if I offer you to teach you one of my secret recipes in exchange for the snap pepper? Hugh, presumptuous puppy, Jean Garcia, does not need your recipes, for he has also been trained by Pierre Cipriani. Good day to you, sir. I am keeping the snap pepper. Aww. I needed that reputation. Damn it. Hmm. What are you going to do, piggies? Oh. Oh, these pigs have a plan. Look at them. Training with this guy. You spend the day learning how to ruin food with subtle ingredient swaps and other sneaky tricks. Now you just need to find a way into the kitchen. The wolf bite loses one quality. God damn it. Pigs eat to increase their standing with the saboteur community and decide to get some extra credit to impress Seamus next time they take his class. Executing a food swap on the unsuspecting Elbite. Challenging Mark seems to be like a right track. Who should the pig sabotage? The wolf at work. Oh, dude. Executing the sabotage at the wolf's bite would not give you some extra credit, but also some practice in sabotaging on site during meal service. You decide, you decide to swap all the Italian sauces with kielbasas, changing the ethnic origin of the evening's menu. Fortunately for the wolf, tonight's guests are the Kalinowski Ka Kowalos. I can't. Polka Orchestra. I can't pronounce it, but the unplanned Polish Italian mashup was a huge hit. Oh, dude. Sweet. Turns out the wolf wasn't just blowing hot air when he talked about his new restaurant, The Wolf's Bite. Early reviews from local diners have a positive, and it looks like the wolfie might have found a niche. Oh, dude, I didn't realize that the um, the newspapers change based on how well you're doing. Holy crap. Okay. Um, well, shoot. Well, I promoted at the grocery store. Maybe... Hmm... Well, I don't want to teach cooking classes because it just seems silly. I could cater. Uh, you know, I could cater. Let's cater. All right. Papa Wolf once said, don't make any big decisions on an empty stomach. Nobody makes bigger decisions than politicians at City Hall. Some delicious pastries with your logo prominently displayed on the wrapper should help the city council perform at their top game while also getting your name in the front city movers and shakers. Dude. Like the responsible business owner you are, you decide to take a free accounting class offered by the city's tax office. What? They offer two exciting tantalizing courses. The joy of tax deductions or the modern art of bookkeeping. With such thrilling options, how are you to choose? Um, I think having a good cat book is going to do it for us. Like, we, like, bad bookkeeping could really screw you in the long run. I should know, my mom's a bookkeeper. So exciting. The word seems to jump from the page. You gain a fascinating new hobby and your skill will keep your funds neat and organized. The wolf earns four wealth! <laughs> wow! I'm making a lot of money, guys. Look at this. What are you gonna do, piggies? Get out of my store. Oh, you're gonna do a smear campaign? Come on. The store gets a ton of foot traffic, a perfect audience for a smear campaign against the wolf's bite. Pamphlets and pickets are the weapons in the battle for public sentiment, and you wield them with great effect. The wolf's bite lose one quality. Protecting intellectual property is a restaurant business is extremely difficult. Sure, you can trademark names and logos, but recipes are a completely different challenge. This gives us two primary ways to attack the wolf in its restaurant. One option is to accuse the wolf of stealing one of our recipes, and the other is to teach people how to make the wolf's recipes at home. Given the current mood at the store, which one makes more sense? 
Are oh, you gonna teach them my recipe, huh? Hmm? You don't need a crucible to actually make crucible fire chicken curry. That is just the wolf showing off. Here, we will show you how to react or recreate that spicy flair you love with a cement mixer and a blowtorch. Oh wow, I have a cement mixer. Who fucking has a cement mixer in their house, huh? I guess I don't have to go out eat. I guess I don't have to go uh, go out to eat any more crucible fire chicken. Hmm. I lost one of my qualities for that. Gosh dang it. The wolf bite gets better with every bite. Word is spreading of the cruisinary visionary at the wolf's bite with new recipes being introduced of the day. There seems to be no end to it. It's the wolf's cunning culinary or culinary cunning, excuse me. Just three days into his career and he already has one of the hottest restaurants in the kingdom. Oh sweet. Alright. Um I should probably work in the front of the restaurant? Let's work at the front of the restaurant. Maybe that'll, you know, we should get some more people in the door. You spend the day greeting the guests and waiting tables. Your customers appreciate the visible effort you are making to ensure they have a pleasant experience. Seeing happy customer makes running around for hours on end seem worth it. The wolf bites gain one quality. Tom Thumb and his wife Thumbelina. Oh, it's adorable. We're in the restaurant this evening. How am I supposed to feed people that small? This is harder than I cooking for giants. Ahem, Sir Wolf, my name is Vorum Valium. Yes, the Vorum Valium. I couldn't help but notice you had a problem that needed some science. For the low price of a free meal, I'll let you borrow my shrink ray, my growth gun, or my chaos cannon. My hypothesis is that either of them could address your small problem. <sighs> I'm, not, I'm definitely not going to grow them. That'd be stupid. I also don't want to unleash a chaos cannon. I'll shrink the food. Oh no, your finger slipped and you missed the food hitting Alice who was waiting on Town Thumb. Oh no, great. Shrink it again? Seriously? Uh, call the rabbit and have me, have him bring me some of that stuff that makes people grow. Oh no! Three quality? Holy shit! I just wanted to shrink my food! I didn't want to make them all big. Shit. Oh, oh you're gonna break into my house? If you can't beat him, cheat him! By messing with the wolf's home life, he will be more irritable, more stressed, and less focused at work. Oh, dude, that's awful. It serves him right for being an unsolicited residential demolition-free samples. The wolf... Oh, I lost one wealth. A pig's brutish cousin, Neapol or Napoleon, is in town and wants to show a good time. It's very important to keep him occupied since he uh, tends to become destructive and goes on a ham pages. <laughs> He's the only one in town for the night, so what are you guys going to do? You guys gonna take him to the barn? Oh, of course you are. Mixing a boar with booze is never a good idea. After a few whiskey snouts, he was drunk enough to cause a ruckus, but not drunk enough to pass out. The ensuing hand page was one of the biggest. He even beat up the bouncers. Oh, dude, that's what you guys get. Oh, witnesses report Gus Fiore's camp crew was seen near Will's bite yesterday. Scouting for good angles and recruiting potential interviewees, the buzz over Gus's appearance at the end of the week was renewed and strengthened by the presence of his crew. All right, dude, okay. It's day five. We only have a few more choices left. I think... Uh, let's see. What do I want to do? I don't want to mentor the youth. Um, maybe I'll go attend the bar. Maybe I can learn some uh, new cocktails for the wolf's bite. Eating without drinking is boring. You need to spice things up and try out the liquid arts. With the same culinary flair that led you to the famous oysters, Carnegie. Ugh. You serve up a bunch of flaming howlers to bar patrons who cannot get enough. Hopefully, no one reminded you had a few. T oh, sweet. We got our reputation up. Shante Carlo, singer, songwriter, and local musician, uh, musical celebrity is hanging out at the barn exclusive VIP section. Getting him to do an intimate exclusive performance of the Wolf's Bite could be a windfall and, if done consistently, a new offering. Sweet. You just need the right approach. Okay. Offer him dinner. Buy him a drink. Rockstar at a rockstar approach. Um... He's a local guy. I don't want to be a rock star. I could also buy him a drink, but I could also offer him dinner. Let's offer him dinner. Oh, look at that. Turns out he's a fan of our crucible fire chicken curry. His regularly has an assistant fetch him for him when he's out in town. He graciously accepts the offer. Oh, the night of his free dinner, paparazzi swarmed the restaurant. Shante declined to perform. He said his artistic spirit would be stifled in the restaurant, but he would go on and record and endorse the crucible fire chicken curry, which was nice. Oh, dude. Our quality's going right back up. Sweet. Dude, I'm so happy we went to the bar. What you gonna do? You gonna sabotage again? You spend the day learning how to ruin food with subtle ingredient swaps. Dude, these pigs are all about sabotaging the kitchen. 
All right, so we lost one quality because of that. Oh, God damn it, Vorum Valium? You're everywhere. He's offering a special guest presentation on metal science, alchemy, and their apl uh, applications in the kitchen. Since you get an opportunity to bend science here in Nefaris, aims you a 10. This brings me to Rimerium and Scorchisel. 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 Two famous metals with their abilities to turn heat into cold and cold into heat. These metals have puzzled scientists for decades. However, recent breakthroughs in the alchemy arts have finally enabled blacksmiths and silversmiths to work these mysterious metals, which are virtually indistinguishable from silver to the unaided eye. Oh, how we use this fun new knowledge. Spoon swap. Let's swap all the silver spoons for Rhymerian sp soup spoons. That way, whenever people order soup, it'll go cold and taste bad. Aw. Oh. Assholes. What a bunch of little jerk pigs. All right, the Wolf Spice has set a culinary world ablaze with revolutionary recipes like the crucible fried chicken. There is enough deliciousness for an entire family or a particularly hungry VIP. We recommend you make a reservation soon for the Gus effect. All right, day six. All right, I think... I think I should come back here. And I think I might train in restaurant ownership. I think that's the right call. You spend the day discussing the nuances and challenges of owning a restaurant. Giuseppe's business acumen and mentorship will help you run a more efficient and profitable restaurant. Wolf gains one wolf. Sweet. Head chef Mar Maruccio Bonafonte. Or is it Mar Marikyo? I can't pronounce it. Has become impressed with your training and has deemed you worthy of the golden spatula. Dude, to earn the spatula, you have to put, uh, you have to but prepare a dessert that combines savory, bitter, and sweet flavors into a single dish. Oh, are you up for the challenge? Salted caramel bean pie sounds awful. Pickled ginger and cabbage gelato? Chocolate strawberry cake. Uh, well, I mean, they're, they're sweet. I don't see where the savory or the pickled ginger. Hmm. He said savory, sweet, and sour, right? So we're going to do that one. Retching admonishes the wolf. Cabbage gelato, really? Is that your idea of dessert? I'd rather eat it. Ugh. Oh, fucker! No! No! <laughs> I thought you said sour! Oh, I ruined my own quality. No. You spend the day eating the restaurant, being as much of a nuisance as possible. You order things that are not on the menu. Send back every order at least once, intentionally spilling drinks and disrupt other guests' meals. You were the only ones in the restaurant by the end of the night. Dude, I'm losing all my qu quality. Gal Frosty is doing a feature on the Wolf's Bite for her hit new show. This seems like a golden opportunity for sabotage. What do you do? Replace the proteins. Gal is vehement on orny file and requests all avian proteins be removed from the menu when she films. You swap all the pork with all the white other white dove meat. Aye, is this dove? You prepared dead for me? Gal shrieked in horror. This may be the last episode she ever films. Dude, I'm losing quality like crazy. With the filming restaurant seven bar set to tomorrow, we couldn't be happier for our own wolf from the rough and tumble street of the bad side of town. He fell to the demolition business and now is successful run to a tour. He's made everyone proud. Oh, but dude, I'm like really worried. All right, I should work the kitchen. You spend the day preparing delicious food for your guests, drawing from all your culinary skill. At the end of the day, you're exhausted and covered in food, but knowing your customers are very well fed makes it worth it. Okay, there's our reputation back. Hey, Wolfie, it's your cousin, Lupin. Your mother told me you had a restaurant. What's the matter? The demolition thing didn't work out? Anyways, I thought I'd come check you out. So listen, I got this pressure cooker. Real mint. A real gem. You won't believe it, but it fell off an O. Oh. Appliance truck. It can be yours real cheap. Uh, decline. Oh, I see. So Mr. Fancy Fancy's restaurant tour is too good for my pressure cooker. Okay, I understand. I'll see you at Christmas. Say hi to your mother for me. All right, well, I got some reputation, but I didn't get any quality back. Crap. The quality's gone down because of these stupid pigs. Oh, I want to see the pig's house. A respite from the hustle and bustle of town and sabotage in particular is much needed and much deserved. You decide to spend some time home and rest a little bit. Your absence is not unnoticed. As they say, absence make the heart grow fonder. While you relax, the town gets a chance to miss you. The pigs gain one reputation. 
A block party in the neighborhood would be a great way to distract people from the wolf's restaurant and possibly make some side money if you're uh, for your admission. We could even invite the wolf. And if he doesn't come, we can make him look bad. And if he does come, it'll make us look good like we're trying to patch things up. What do you do? Oh, the cheapskate will pass on the party as expected. While he didn't pull the entire town away from the restaurant for the night, the turnout was pretty solid and guests definitely took note of who did not and who did and who did not attend. Looks like you're just worry. Uh, separated the neighborhood's haves and have-nots. Oh, my reputation is going down like crazy. All right, so local celebrity chef The Wolf was featured on a special hour-long episode of Restaurant Saverns and Bars. It's in what is likely to be the one, come one of the highest rated episodes of the long-running series. Oh, shoot. Gus Fury not only explores the food, but also the sold restaurant and culinary mystery. Please stay tuned for next week. All right, here you go. Here's how we did. Oh, shiz. The restaurant turned, about, turned out to be a veritable money printing machine. Holy crap. Ingredients came in, food went out, and it was extraordinarily lucrative. Dude, the surge in wealth of the wolf took place despite the pig's best effort to sabotage him. The wolf found himself with two excesses, cash and contempt. Then inspiration struck. The pigs were disliked by all, and their brethren in the West Side Porkers were widely detested. An anti-pig campaign would free the town of the porcine pestilence. All he had to do was win the hearts and minds of the other townsfolk. The wolf spared no expense, a billboard in town, television commercials, fires, pamphlets, and even a skywriter. The pork purge took a little bit of nudging to get off the ground, but it quickly caught on once people started coming forward with their store stories of victimization. The pigs and the porkers are rounded up and the kicked out of town. That's so sad. The wolf turned back to his work lighter, but also a little empty, no longer having anyone to hate. Dude, I really screwed those pigs. Like we actually ran every single pig out of town. I don't know how I feel about that. I don't. Anyways, this is such a cute game. If you guys like to see more, please let me know. I definitely want to play the pigs next time. So let me know your thoughts in the low, uh, below in the comments. Uh, please be sure to like, favorite, and subscribe. It definitely helps us out. And uh, I'll see you guys next time. Bye.